So th there's rice everywhere here during the rice harvest and it's all sitting out on the roads. Um, uh, literally all out on the roads and, and it's the ladies with the, with the rakes uh, raking it all to, to dry it all out. So they've got to dry it all out enough to, um, to store it so it doesn't go rotten. But, um, but yeah, that's how, you, that's how your rice starts out. Um, like that. <laughs> um, and, and it's amazing to me that it's all on the road. They, they, sweep, they sweep all the road first and, um, uh, and then, then dry it all and then they sweep it all up. Last night this was all up under covers. Um, and uh, they just dry it and dry it. Today's a nice day, and so last night they must have known that there was going to be no rain during the night because it was the first time I'd seen them actually put the rice out at night time um, on the roads. And I guess because the air was really dry, it, it kept drying it out. But but just amazing, they they run these rakes through it time and time again all day long and and um, and dry it all out. So. Uh, and the thing that I find odd about all of this too is that where's the birds? <laughs> There's no birds come and eat the rice. Um, uh, you know, and I'm betting it's because any birds that do try to eat the rice get eaten themselves. But, um, uh, but you know, you'd expect to see at least a couple of birds trying to eat the rice, have a feed for free, but no, nah, you almost never see birds around. <laughs> see uh, here this is all the tracks from the harvester so this this field here was harvested with a with a track harvester and and now they're just burning off all the husks so after they um, uh, after they cut that and thrash the rice and they they burn off what's left over but um, but sometimes they don't do that so it must just be what they're doing with the paddock here or that because um, normally they use all the husks for, for um, mulch and things um, over here next door, this is the harvester and it's a track harvester and you can see that they just go around and harvest the, the rice like they harvest wheat. But uh, up further, uh, obviously it depends, you've got to pay the harvester uh, and there's a bunch of people that just uh, cut it by hand and then put it through a thrasher um, uh, to, to um, thrash out the rice. And up in the, up in the country they just um, cut it by hand and then you know, bash it over the edge of a bin and knock the rice out. Um, uh, and then, then they chuck it on the road to dry it out because roads are black and they're hot. And so, yeah, there's, there's so much manual labour in rice. But this is the second crop this year. I've been here since January and this is the second crop of rice that they've had this year. So, yeah, being there makes lots of rice. Uh, this, this lady's come up here and she's burning, burning all the rest of it here. So, yeah, I haven't ever seen them burning the the husks like this or the or the stalks like this because normally they they feed it to cows and um, use it for things and stuff. So she must be yeah mulch and things. Yeah, build houses out of it, all sorts of stuff. They make brooms out of it. Um, but but she must be uh, preparing the paddock for something. I'd say. Yeah, they yeah mate. Maybe she wants the ash for the soil and not the, you know, maybe it's the ash that she wants this time, you know. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a different nutrient in ash. Um, so maybe that's what they're trying to do. But anyway, uh, and you see the, the, the ladies all start early in the morning and gum boots on and, you know, on a push bike. <laughs> so, so much of this is all done by hand.
So it must be all harvested and up into the little hoppers there at the moment. <coughs> oh, that it's already, oh, maybe it's already harvested and he's just cutting it now. Uh, I don't know. It actually, actually just looks like it's grass there. Eh? Doesn't look like it's wheat. Uh, uh, I mean, not wheat. Doesn't look like it's rice. Let me have a look at this stuff here. <laughs> that just looks like grass to me, but no, nah, no. Nah, it's probably rice. <laughs> anyway. Just thought I'd film on the way out because, because, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's rice everywhere at the moment. And if it's all the way across the road, like it is down through there, um, you uh, you just drive your motorbike or your car or your truck or whatever over the rice. <laughs> Speaking of driving over things, the other day I saw them out on the roadside uh, tipping aluminium cans on the road, and they were. Um, <laughs> Just pouring them out on the road and driving them over, driving over them with a truck, so to squash them, uh, which I hadn't seen before. But I guess that works. And there, bags of rice on the side there. And then there's all this rice hay as well that they that they dry out and feed the animals and use for, for bedding and, you know, chook bedding and things. <laughs> and, and that old lady was one of the, one of the rice harvesters, obviously. Uh, they're all, they're all bent over like that. I mean, after, after years and years of back-breaking work, uh, uh, yeah, they can't stand up straight. You see, you see old ladies like that very often here. And see this, this is a little hand-drawn cart up here. Uh, the guy's just driving along with his, with his cart, uh, or rather pulling it along. And he put all that rice out there, rakes it all, and it all comes out of the hand-drawn cart. Xin chào! <laughs> he's going, ah, why he's got a camera? I'm not going to say hello. <laughs> oh, and here, look. Um, this, um, oh, there you go. Oh, a couple of vases driving down the road. Four of them. I, I saw, I saw those guys driving down the road here with four vases yesterday morning. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, maybe they're delivering wine. Anyway, have a look at this car. There you go. Um, but, but see this lady here is, um, stacking up the rice stalks and, uh, and drying them so they stack them up like this and then dry them out they use them for um for brooms and they sell them for about a dollar each so they 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 get nothing much for them um but um uh but everything <laughs> this is what i love about vietnam is it's like um australia's lost and america and, and that's lost all sense of capitalism uh, everything here's got a value but um, but in 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 our socialist economies now, um, uh, so many things don't have value. Like like um, uh, uh, in Australia, if it doesn't have a value of more than 
uh, $30 an hour or your, your minimum wage to, to harvest it or pick it up or clean it up or whatever. It just doesn't get done unless the state pays for it. Whereas over here, uh, all of these things get picked up and used and, and that if they're, worth, if they're worth 50 cents, people go around and pick them up and, and use them because um, cause there's no state funded um, um, uh, stuff here. So anyway, I think, um, uh, you know, sure we should, um, we should uh, have some guidelines for employment, but capitalism really should be letting the market set the wages. Um, and that's what's happening in Vietnam and, and that's why everything's got a value and, and people, uh, people, everybody's got a job, you know, like unemployment's not a thing here. Anyway, let's keep driving. And even when people are unemployed here, there's, I know they, they're in the tropical zone and, and so food's, food's growing everywhere here and, and so they don't have to worry too much about food um, uh, as far as growing it. And yeah, sure, in Australia, it's harder to grow food everywhere, you know, like water and all of those things. You certainly um, uh, don't have as much opportunity in Australia in some places to grow everything you need, maybe. But, um, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I, I, just, I just think people should be more self-sustaining, um, you know, in the West. Yeah, yeah. Everybody here understands the seasons. They all know, oh, this is the rice season. This is when, like my wife knows when all the fruit comes into season. In Australia, I've got no idea when fruit comes into season. I, I've, you know, 40 years old, well, I kind of do a little bit, but, 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 you know, mangoes are at Christmas. You know, that's about what I know. <laughs> See this? This is the yellow brick road, uh, or the, or the, the rice road, as it were. <laughs> and, and this lady doesn't expect anybody to be driving down here, so, so there's not much of a track here because uh, this is a joining road. But, um, uh, <laughs> Xin Chào. <laughs> No, not, not going to talk to me. Okay. Okay, go around your rice. Okay. Mate, there must be tons of rice on this road. That's a good harvest. Anyway, uh, you just, uh, these are all the things why I travel to Vietnam. It's not, it's not to see, um, you know, beautiful beaches or, or, uh, hotels or resorts or whatever I travel here to see how the locals live and 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 what they do to survive and live in this climate and economy oi zo oi <laughs> that's a big load of hay <laughs> well at least it's a, a there's actually a trailer on that motorbike xin chào xin chào xin chào and and everybody here is so friendly like like even in our street um, uh, I'm a foreigner and that, but everybody's really friendly. They all invite you for tea. They all invite you to, to see things. And see, this, this lady here is uh, sifting the rice uh, to sift out the chaff. Right? So I'll just show you that. Xin chào. Ah. See? Got a little stool. Ah, so, so, ah, so, so, how simple is that? You know, sift out the, the straw and the chaff out of the, out of the rice, and then all of the, all of the stuff that's not good quality comes to the top, and she puts it in the bag. All right. So all of this rice had to have somebody manually do this, and this is why um, <laughs> this is why um, rice isn't a crop that uh, we grow in the West. Nobody would nobody would um, do this amount of work to, to eat. I don't think. <laughs> uh, come on. Uh, so anyway, if you're in Vietnam, look us up. <laughs> well, I'll buy you a beer.
that'll that'll cost me 30 cents so uh, you know <laughs> anyway I'm gonna get going down the road and we might see some more there's always stuff to see let's see there's literally everywhere there's rice at the moment and it's all on the roads I had no idea that the rice we eat at home that's imported from Vietnam was all dried on a road what they do to dry rice before they had roads? <laughs> Somebody driving their motorbike through it. <laughs> There's just Miles and miles of rice on roads around Vietnam at the moment. And, and see all the mud on the right side of the road, that's from the harvest that's coming out of the field, but then they dry the rice on the other side of the road. And, and just by the way, you might think that we're out in the country here, but we're not. This is like in the city. Um, uh, th this is Haizong. Uh, there's four million people live here. Uh, in the province, that is. Oh, another road full of rice. And there's like a a council uh, a council yard here and so the government building yard uh, is full of rice too <laughs> it's literally rice galore I guess like wheat doesn't need to be dried out I don't think um, uh, it dries in the paddock before you harvest it but um, yeah motorbike washer that was another thing that surprised me is that they wash motorbikes here I've never seen somebody wash a motorbike in Australia well certainly not in a business that's for sure <laughs> but when I get back to Australia though I'm gonna go into a, like a car wash and ask them to wash my motorbike and see what they say <laughs> if if you know that they wash motorbikes oh there's more rice down there <laughs> If you, if you know that they wash motorbikes in Australia, put it in the comments, let me know how much they, they charge for a motorbike wash. Over here it's like uh, 20,000 20, VND, uh, uh, so uh, less than one USD or, or about $1.25 Australian to wash your motorbike. Uh, that's where it's, it just doesn't make any sense in Vietnam to do manual labour uh, if, you, if you're an investor or if you've got a business or, or something. Uh, manual labour uh, is so cheap here uh, because everybody needs a job so um, if somebody's if people are unwilling to do it then the people that are willing to do it uh, uh, will, will you know do it for any price <laughs> see the pork shop <laughs> All the pork laying outside in the sun all day. Well, not all day. Between 11 and 1, they, they go and have a sleep, but but, uh, but most of the day. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's about all from me. There's, uh, uh, I'm just going to work, so I'll see you later. Okay, you can't see there, but... Um, that's I'm in that in that uh, area that was all covered, totally covered with rice this morning, and um, and now it's all covered over with a, a bit of tarp that's a meter and a half wide and 
bricks all over it. So, so going all the way down there. So, and uh, uh, so just for the night, they cover it all up. I just turn around. Actually, I turn around and you can see with the headlights because there's a past each of it on the other end. This is this whole big area that was all rice. They sweep it all up, pile it up, cover it all up for the night. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, there's a lot of work in drying rice out. Okay. This is fish. Um, uh, I'm not sure where from. This is a big size fish. Uh, here. Uh, catch here. Catch here. Ah, he's a big fish. So, so I was just riding past on my motorbike, and these guys invited me to stop and have a beer. So we sit on the paper and and uh, have a beer, and and it's always head, 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 head. Ong <laughs> beer. Peter, 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 Mui quay. Nó thơm quá. Đồng quê Việt Nam. Đồng quê. Ok, come on. Cheers. Cheers. Đi đến cho ca nữa đi. Đồng quê Việt Nam, đặc sản Đồng quê Việt Nam. Đồng quê Việt Nam. Ok. Đồng quê. Ok. Các bạn. Này làm luôn ở đây rồi. Anh làm luôn này. Làm thứ gì? Công ty gì ở dưới thế kỷ đấy. Cheers. What now? Bia hơi Việt Nam. Đại cho ăn, đại cho ăn uống này. Miếng này. Cá. It's a homemade beer. Cắp cho cơ, phải cắp cho. Cứ thử đi. Không sợ chết đâu. Đây 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 đây, lấy miếng gần này, lấy miếng gần này. Đây 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 đây. Được quê. Đây đây chấm chấm. Chấm này. Ok ok. Chấm một canh, một canh. Sốt. Hmm. Yeah, this is some <laughs> kind of fish. Wow, wow, wow! We got the bite! Wow! Hmm, no one. No one. No one. No 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 Đông quê Việt Nam. Đông quê Việt Nam. Đông quê. Cảm nhận thế nào? Ok. Thank you. Come on, come on. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It seems like the fish have to be ripped apart at the end of the table here um, to get the, the meat out of them. They've just cooked them in a fire and then and they rip them apart. <laughs> this is a young fella's job, <laughs> apparently. I love uh, Peter. Okay, well, <laughs> that was an interesting experience. Uh, uh, just driving home. Now, those guys have drank, you know, invited me for a few drinks before. And I and, and the last time, uh, one of the guys, like, because it's always head, 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 finish it. And, and then because you've got to, um, uh, like, you have to drink a beer with each person individually, one by one, and then they have to invite you um, because you invited them the first time uh, one by one. So then uh, there's, you know, six people at the table. You've committed yourself to 12 drinks, like 12 beers, and sculling each beer just like I did. So <coughs> I, I um, chickened out. I, um, I said my, my wife's uh, expecting me home soon, you know, uh, we're going out for dinner tonight, um, and so after sculling five beers, uh, I, I went like, you know, five beers in 15 minutes, that's enough. <laughs> and I've got to go, <laughs> right? And so then, of course, 
I did the right thing and hopped on my motorbike and drove home. Um, <coughs> and um, uh, and uh, it's not far. And uh, um, uh, but but mate, if I'd stayed there, you just keep drinking them. And and like last time, one of the guys, uh, he he stumbled away for a pee, and then he fell in the in the table drain, and um, and you know he came back walking back about 15 minutes later with you know water reeds and mud and black stuff all over him. So I didn't want to be that bloke tonight. Uh, so I just went like, you know, hey, um, uh, you know, my wife's going to be home soon, so I've got to go. Okay, no problem, bye-bye. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like an absolute sprint with drinking here. Um, and, and those fish that they had, it was actually really, really nice. A really nice flavour to it. Um, uh, even though, like, they literally caught the fish out of the rice field drain, right? So I'll show you that drain later, but... But that drain's not, you know, pristine. Put it that way. And then, then they chucked them in a fire, burnt them to death, and then the young fella there was ripping their heads off and peeling their skin off, so then they could eat the meat. Um, but the the meat was actually quite nice. It wasn't overcooked or anything. It was it was, uh, and I don't know, like it looked a little bit like a catfish, um, but uh, I I couldn't figure out whether it was a catfish or not. But it was quite nice. But um, but it's just not how I prefer to eat fish. Um, you know, burnt to death on a coal fire and then and then served on the on the ground, sitting on paper. But but that's that that's the culture and, and like that's the local pub here. So uh, the last like not last week but the week before those same guys. Oi oi oi! Come and have a beer. And that's the thing. I stopped had a beer with them. But I can't talk to them. It's it's. You know, it's really hard. Like, all I can say is, I'm from Australia, my age is this, my name is this, uh, and that, that's about all I can say. So, so <coughs> I always feel like um, uh, they, they actually invite me because they know that I drink good and, uh, and that I'll scull a beer, no problem. And that's like, that gives you kudos here in, in Vietnam. Uh, but, but, Jeez, I tell you what, um, if I'm if if I stay there much longer, I'm really really drunk. So anyway, that's that's it. Uh, I'm gonna pretend like I've been home, just waiting for my wife. So bye for now.